You know, there's one word that might just get believers or Christians in trouble. It's one word that you may use that could get you in trouble. Now, Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another. Now, we are commanded by our Lord to love one another. In fact, he said, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So Jesus want us to love as he loved us. He want us to love each other the same way. First John chapter four, verse number seven says, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So as we can see, John is saying that we ought to love one another because love is, is of God. And everyone that love, you are born of God. And you know God. And if you don't love, then you don't know God because God is love. However, as a believer, you may find yourself in trouble for the very thing that I'm speaking about. In fact, if you verbalize that love, sometimes, not saying every time, but sometimes it may get you in trouble. Now, I'm going to be a little more specific in a bit. But let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9. Let's look at what Paul says. He says, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. So Paul said, Hey, as concerning brotherly love, you don't need me to write you about that, because you are taught of God to love one another. So God teaches us that we ought to love one another. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says this. <clears throat> he says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God has given us this spirit of love. So we should be loving one another as the scripture says that God has taught us because we show true love for our neighbors right by well just we ought to have true love for our brothers and sisters in Christ in fact we should have love for all people but sometimes you could verbalize that love and you may face some backlash for it the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1 says let brotherly love continue let brotherly love continue and in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 it says and let us love and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works and let us consider one another to provoke unto love in other words we ought to steer up one another in love but as I've been saying that sometimes when you verbalize that love it could get you in trouble now what am I talking about am I saying that you're going to get in trouble with God because you verbalize that love definitely not Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10 says, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. Now, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm talking about. You know, it's a word called be loved that could get you in trouble as a fellow Christian. The word beloved, it is a word of endearment. It's a word that should express love 
and express this affection that Paul says in Romans 12, 10, we ought to have for one another. He says, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. So we have all these scriptures from Jesus, from John to Paul, who's talking about expressing this love for one another because we show that we are born of God and of God when we have this love for one another. But sometimes you can find yourself using the word beloved to your fellow brother and sister in Christ and find yourself in trouble with your significant other. See, a man may say uh, to another man, beloved. And some people will find offense to that. Even a man saying it to another man. Why? Because they, in this time, people think that's, well, men don't say that to other men. Or some people might think it's actually a gay thing to to say to another man beloved or you may be a man or a woman telling the opposite gender you know calling them beloved or beloved of God and you find yourself in trouble with your significant other but why do why can't a man call another man that's believers or even if you wasn't believers why can't a man voice love for another man why can't a man voice love for his fellow sister or a, a sister voice her love for her fellow brother in Christ see because when you use the word be loved some people may take it wrong some people may think that you are um you disrespecting your partner by telling someone else uh, that you love them or, or voicing this word beloved to your other, to one another. So some people may take it romantically. Some people may be using it innocently, but then the receiver of the word may take it wrong. They may think you're flirting with them or hitting on them just because you said beloved. See, but the Apostle John in the book of um, the Apostle uh, yeah John in the book of First John chapter four verse uh, one says, "Be loved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits rather they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world." Now the first thing that he said to these people of God is, "Be loved," and then he gave them a warning to don't believe every spirit. See, he was showing true love for these believers by warning them against these spirits and these false prophets. But he told them or he called them beloved. Why? It's because he had brotherly love for these people. And he showed their brotherly love by warning them against these spirits that he says you are not to believe because many false prophets are going out into the world. Now, um, the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3. Let's get that for a minute. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3. Now, Proverbs 4, 3 says, For I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. So we obviously talking about a son here who is beloved in the sight of his mother. What's well, high how is he beloved? Because he's showing it's evident from the scripture that this mother have a love for her child. Acts chapter 15, verse 25, it says, It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Now, you have apostles here who is saying that Barnabas and Paul is their beloved. 
No, these men are not gay. Yes, these are men saying it towards other men. But they showing brotherly love. So when you say, they said that it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. There is no ill intentions there. But they just showing that they have a brotherly love. They didn't say brother Paul or brother Barnabas. They just said beloved. Um, hold on one second. Uh, brother Paul and Saul. Hold on. Let me get that again, y'all. Hold on. He says, he says, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. He didn't say beloved brother or beloved sister. See, people, some people think that you ought to say brother. If you a man, you got to say beloved brother. But the apostles didn't say that. They said with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. So, see, we got to understand that it's the Bible that teaches us. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine. So it don't matter what men may say or what people may say. What does the Bible teach? See, the Bible is the inspired word of God. First Corinthians chapter four, verse 17 says this for this cause. Have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord? So Paul is talking about how Timothy, um, Timothy is his beloved son, or Timotheus, his beloved son. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at verse 21. Paul says, But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do Tachikas a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord. So he's saying that Timothy um, Tychicus is his beloved brother. But I read to you in Acts 15, 25 how he says my um, beloved Barnabas and Paul. So you could say beloved brother. You could say beloved sister. It's nothing wrong with that but it's nothing wrong with saying beloved to a person or beloved Barnabas or beloved Paul. See, sometimes you it's like you have to revise what you say in these days and times because you don't want to give people the wrong impression or you don't want to make your significant other uh, uncomfortable. But why can't we just follow the word of God? See, if the man and the woman or uh, the couple or whoever is in close proximity with the word of God and they read the word of God, they study the word of God and they live according to the word of God, they wouldn't take this wrong. They wouldn't find offense or people wouldn't take it as being said to them romantically. You should not, some, someone shouldn't say beloved to you and you think that they in love with you like in a romantic way. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. This is Paul. He says to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Now, he, now Timothy is not Paul's actual blood son that he had that came out of him. However, he considered Timothy his dearly beloved son son. 1 Corinthians uh, no, Philemon. I want to go to the book of Philemon. And um, let me get that scripture there. Philemon uh, I believe it's only uh, one chapter here. I got to find it. Oh, and, and I want to get verse number one of that. Philemon one and one. So Philemon one and one, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, 
and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved. So I see a man, Paul and Timothy, referring to Philemon as his dearly beloved. Look at that. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved. So this is Paul saying it to another man. This is Paul and Timothy saying our dearly beloved to another man. But some people take that as, well, men don't say that to other men. What? Are you living for the Bible? Or are you living for the world today and how the world does it? If you a true man and woman of God, you live for the Bible, for the word of God. Get See, you got to get out of your own way of doing things. You got to get out of the world's way today. The world ain't of God. So the world going to say a man saying to another man, beloved, is gay. Or oh, it's something wrong with that. But Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ and Timothy said to Philemon that he was his dearly beloved. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5 While he yet spake behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him so this is God saying of his son Jesus this is my beloved son but the point I'm bringing up to you is that Calling someone else beloved is not to, in a sexual way. It's not sexual. It's not romantically. A man can say to another man that he, he is his dearly beloved. Why? Because he's showing brotherly love. It's love in Jesus, love in Christ. It's the love of God that you have for that person, for that fellow believer. In fact, I would rather, and I'm sure God would rather, us use the word beloved more rather rather than downing each other, rather than uh, name calling each other, rather than, um, what's the word I want to use? Rather than um, railing each other, rather than name calling and giving each other a bad name. Why can't you just say dearly beloved? Why does it have to be gay to you? You follow the world or you going to follow God? I just want to, you know, talk about that because I want the true men and women of God to know that you can show godly love and you can say godly um, loving words to each other. A man can say it to another man. A woman can say it to another woman. A man should be able to say it to a woman. A woman should be able to say it to a man if it's innocently, innocently and decently in true love for this person as a fellow beloved, uh, beloved brother and sister in Christ. It doesn't mean you have romantic feelings for the next person. And don't take it as that if someone ever says that, says that to you. If someone say, hey, my dearly beloved or my beloved brother or my beloved sister or just beloved, just know that it should be said in godly love and not in the way this world thinks. Christians, believers, true men and women of God don't think like the world. We think like God. If any man speak, as the scripture says, let him speak as the oracles of God or as the words of God. We live in this world, but we're not of this world. All right? We live in this world, but we're not of this world. And don't think like this world. Think like a man or woman of God.
If you haven't accepted Jesus, repent of your sins. Get baptized in the name of the in the name of Jesus Christ. Get your sins washed away, man. Live for God. Speak like God. Live, act like God. Be merciful like God. Do everything like God. Be holy for the Lord thy God is holy. Be perfect for the Lord thy God is perfect. And live for him, not this world. Did The Bible tells us that this world is passing away. In the lust of it. Be not of this world. Because if you love the world, the love of God is not in you.